Why make a beginner's Sifu guide now? Well, this is for you, the player coming to the game months, even years after launch. Maybe there's a DLC that made you check the game out. Who knows, but I'm here to explain a lot of the stuff the game is very poor at teaching you. I'll separate this guide into chapters, so if you already know some of the basics, skip ahead. We will cover basic attacks and guarding, stun states and combos, basic special attacks, the aging system and unlocking skills, additional special attacks and the focus bar, weapons, advanced special attacks, animation cancelling, super dizzy stun, and basic boss strategies. Let's get started. Like many melee action games, you have two attack buttons, light and heavy. What would usually be your jump button is set to interact, and there's a button for picking up weapons. Shoulder buttons are set to focus attack, which is a special targeted move, throw weapon, which is great for immobilizing a threat, dash, which this game calls dodge, and guard, which leads to parries and avoids, which we'll get into very soon. Great starting combos to learn are light light heavy, which ends with a kick that pushes away, and the full heavy combo, pressing heavy four times, ending with a knockdown. Stick with those two combos to start, don't overcomplicate it. This game isn't about learning a bunch of combos, it's about connecting short groups of hits into special inputs. The first thing you need to know about Sifu is that it is 1. not a button mashing beat em up or a hack and slash action game, and 2. it is not a heavily parry focused game like Sekiro. If you're a parrying god, then fine, play this game with parries. Parries are great in Sifu, but they are not what the game is primarily designed around. It's a big mistake that they introduce it as the first mechanic, it's misleading. You need to learn how to avoid. The vast majority of enemy attacks in this game can be ducked by holding block and tapping down. And why do you want to avoid instead of just blocking? Well, blocking attacks affects your structure, your stamina bar basically. And once it maxes out, you can't block anymore. It recovers quickly, but you still don't want to take that damage. Certain enemy attacks, like flaming kicks, do high damage to structure, so you won't last long if you're just blocking. Avoiding attacks causes the enemy to whiff, and you can punish during their recovery animation. This is called a whiff punish. Hitting the enemy after avoiding their attack puts them in a stun state. This is the most important mechanic of the game, and you need to get used to it. If you attack enemies outside of stun states, you can trigger their guards and parries. Let's look at how an enemy reacts to me being aggressive. You'll see that he sometimes gets hit, sometimes guards, and finally parries if he guards several times. Now look what happens if I avoid his attacks and then whiff punish to put him in stun. He eats a full combo. Putting enemies into this stun state will create many opportunities as we go forward with this guide. I suggest you enter training mode and just practice this. The default training enemy will generally only attack you with two attacks. First is a slow charged heavy punch, second is a quick series of two punches. Practice ducking under these attacks and punishing. You'll notice that ducking these attacks causes the enemy to stop attacking. But if you block the attacks, he follows up with additional attacks. Don't let this freak you out, you can hold the initial attacks and then react to the follow-up, avoid and punish. The sooner you realize that ducking the first attack isn't the most important thing, you'll be on your way. All you need is to duck attacks that leave them open for punishing, whether it's a starting attack or finishing attack. But it's not all about playing defense and then punishing. You can attack outside of stun, and you should, but tactically. Don't try to spam attack in their face. Hit once, maybe twice, and try to integrate the first of our key special inputs, sweep. Pressing back and then forward, followed by heavy attack, will sweep the legs out from an opponent and put them on the ground. Don't think of this input as down up, think of it as back forward. So if you're facing front, it'll be down up, but if you're facing right, the input is left right. Pay attention to the direction of your character and the sweep will come out every time. Sweep someone to just take them off the board for a bit, or hold the weapon pickup button to do a free ground attack. If you're being offensive and enemies start blocking, toss in a sweep and there's a good chance it'll connect. Sweep is the first step towards really controlling the combat space. It can even be inputted backwards to get a sweep in the opposite direction from where you're facing. This is wonderful for neutralizing a threat that's approaching from behind, and the animation lowers your hurt box so it avoids incoming attacks. Really good option when you're fighting multiple enemies. The next crucial tool we need to talk about is directional throw. 
performed by pressing light attack and interact together while an enemy is in a stun state. Throw is a game changer and should be used to push back groups of enemies and smack them into walls for great damage. Like I said, it's done during stun states, so you can avoid some high attacks and whiff punish to put them in stun and then throw them in any direction you want. The stun duration is so long that you can hit with multiple attacks and still get a throw at the end. See me here avoiding a high attack and then landing three heavy attacks as a punish and ending with throw. Enemies that are dizzy from a takedown animation can also be thrown. Throw can be used next to ledges to throw enemies to their death. It's a great way to immediately eliminate someone. You can also bash their heads into surfaces. There's actually a lot of good environmental interaction in Sifu, not just offensively, but in defense too. Weapons are scattered around many rooms, and sometimes you can use a table to slide away as an escape from being surrounded. The last basic special attack we'll cover is Palm Strike. Back forward light attack. Similar to throw, this is used to push enemies away from you, but the attack itself does damage and doesn't have to be performed during a stun state. Palm Strike can be tossed into your general offense as long as you're not overextending and triggering parries. What the hell are you doing? Sometimes after a stun combo and throwing an enemy into a wall, I like to run up to him and Palm Strike immediately to splat him against the wall again. It does a bunch of damage and will likely bring an enemy to death. Palm Strike can be inputted in reverse to get a devastating kick from the other side. This too is a game changer. It's a great way to make an approaching enemy back off. I suggest practicing this in training mode against two or three opponents. Try to focus on one enemy and keep the other away with a reverse Palm Strike kick. So we have a few combos and a few special inputs. Now we put them together into a series, and I'm just using Heavy Attack as a starting point. Two heavies into Sweep. Three heavies into Sweep. Two heavies into Palm Strike. Three heavies into Palm Strike. Two heavies, throw, run, and sweep. This is the rhythm of Sifu's combat. Don't mash it out, press your inputs deliberately and with patience. Don't overcommit to a combo when someone else is coming towards you. Use sweeps, throws, and palm strike not just offensively and in combos, but defensively to control the space. Practice doing these basic combos on a dummy opponent. When you have a handle on it, practice avoiding and then whiff punishing. Now let's talk about the two systems that tend to confuse players the most, the aging system and the upgrade system. Every time you die in Sifu, you age by the number of total deaths you have. If you're at age 20 and you die your first time, you age by one year, putting you at 21. If you die a second time, you age by two years, putting you at 23. If you die a third time, you age by three years, putting you at 26, and so on and so on. So the more you die, the faster you age. The older you get, the higher your damage output gets, which can help you out, but you also have reduced health so you die quicker. It's a trade-off. As you play, if you're doing well, you'll be able to reduce your total deaths. This does not make you any younger, but it makes you age slower. If you have 5 total deaths, you can work them off by surviving long enough to lower the counter back down, so you aren't punished so hard the next time you die. The upgrade system is presented in two ways. One is in the shrines, found in each level, that give upgrades to your character, and the other is the skill tree that adds new offensive and defensive options to your playstyle. Starting with the shrine, there's three categories separated by the resources required to unlock them. The first category is determined by age. If you're older than the numbers listed, you can't purchase these. The second category is about level score. Your performance in combat and maintaining a point multiplier determines how many points you have, and these points unlock different options for regaining focus bar and structure and increasing how much structure damage is dealt by your parry. The final category is about XP, which is gained from every enemy kill. You cannot change how much XP you get, it's already set, and you can use it to increase the size of your focus bar, increase weapon effect on enemy structure, or delete your total number of deaths. You can pick from one of these categories at each shrine, and the upgrades are applied throughout the rest of the game. XP can also be spent on unlocking skills, which can be done at shrines, during the resurrection screen after every death, and at the literal skill tree in the middle of the hub area between levels. Let's simplify this and just look at one upgrade, Snap Kick. It costs 500 XP, and with the inputs Forward Forward Heavy, you can perform an advancing kick that's great for starting offense. 
This upgrade is not permanent, it goes away if you have to restart a level. If you want this upgrade to be permanent, you have to invest 500 XP into it 5 more times, and then you have it forever. So if you find a skill that you really like, it's a good idea to dump your XP into it so you always have it while you're at this stage of learning the game. And honestly, Snapkick is a good place to start. It's simple to perform and easy to understand its usefulness. A nearly guaranteed strong offensive option is Snapkick into Sweep. It'll put pretty much any basic enemy on the ground. Looking at all these unlockable skills, it can be overwhelming. There's no way to know what's going to help you as you're learning. So let me recommend Snap Kick, Sliding Kick, and Raining Strikes. I just explained Snap Kick, you really want to get that. And Sliding Kick lets you do an advancing sweep out of a run. When running, press Heavy and you'll knock someone onto the ground. It's a great way to enter a room and start a fight, and to chase someone down who you pushed or threw. Raining Strikes is a delayed attack where you press Heavy one time, wait a split second, and then press it again to trigger a flurry of hits. It's a great source of early game damage, and will help against enemies that have short stun windows that don't let you combo them. Each tier of skills is fully available for purchase from the beginning, but as you age, they will become locked off. Tier 5 closes once you pass age 29, Tier 4 closes at age 39. I don't know why the game doesn't advise you of this before you start making unlocking decisions, but I'm not going to get into my complaints about what the game doesn't communicate to you, or I'll start yelling. Finally, there's the Focus Bar. You start with one focus attack, the Eye Gouge, which not only damages an enemy, but also puts them into a stun state. And what do you do during stun states? We follow up with other attacks, or use it to throw them. If you want this enemy to be taken off the board quickly, you can sweep. But sometimes you may not have time for a follow up, so I'd suggest unlocking Strong Sweep, a focus attack that will put anyone on the ground instantly, even bosses. Focus Bar is regained through landing attacks on enemies and by avoiding their attacks by hopping or ducking over them. Focus attacks can make for excellent last second escapes and for targeting a problematic enemy. Using enemy takedowns will regenerate a little health, and you might think that you should always use them because of that. They're fun animations and they keep you alive, but there are certain enemies in the game that will go into hyper mode if you try to finish them with a takedown. These enemies aren't set, but the more you play, the more you'll get a feel for who it probably is. Till then, you'll have to occasionally deal with buffed enemies that have extended attack strings and a lot of health. Be really careful with them, and use your focus bar to get some good damage. Okay, that covers the basics. Before we move on, let's recap. Two basic combos, light light heavy to push back and four heavies into knockdown. Avoiding high attacks and whiff punishing to put enemies into long stun states for combos or throws. Controlling the room using special inputs like Sweep, Palm Strike, and Directional Throw. Basic starting skills like Snap Kick, Sliding Kick, and Raining Strikes. And using Focus Attacks to give yourself some breathing room and take out a specific enemy. If you're just getting into Sifu, I suggest you stop here. This is enough to keep you busy for hours, and honestly enough to take you through the whole game if you have enough determination. If you need some help with bosses, you can skip to that section, but everything else beyond this point will be for more advanced play. Let's talk about weapons. Weapons are great for putting yourself at an advantage, and hitting enemies with weapons does great damage to their structure. You can upgrade this at shrines to do even more structure damage. Great against bosses. Bottles, bats, swords, staffs, all have different strategies behind them. Staff is great for distance play and can sweep a bunch of enemies in front of you. Swords are fast and with the charged back fist, you can insta-kill any non-boss enemy in the game by impaling them. Special inputs result in unique animations for different weapons. The crotch punch skill is vastly different across weapons. With the sword, it lunges forward slashing. With the bat, it does a focused hit to the face. And with the staff, it's a very long-range poke to the balls. Experiment with these weapons to find unique functions. When you're ready to incorporate more skills, a lot of this comes down to taste. But allow me to advocate for Chasing Trip Kick and Flowing Claw. Chasing Trip Kick is one of the most powerful attacks in the game. Flying towards an enemy and putting them on the ground, guaranteed. It's used after Palm Strike or Directional Throw. If you do a long stun combo and end with Palm Strike, Chasing Trip Kick will follow them. If you're surrounded and need to get out, a Reverse Palm Strike Kick will connect to Chasing Trip Kick and get you away from the heat. Flowing Claw turns your back to the enemy and then either flies at them with a flurry of punches or throws out a roundhouse. 
I really like doing the flurry after finishing a combo, just to sneak in a few extra hits. But the real magic comes from using this for Reverse Palm Strike. Reverse Palm Strike really is a devastating attack. It's got range, it's got power. If you land it as a counter hit, meaning it hits as the enemy is trying to attack, it does big damage to enemy structure. If someone is in front of you, do Flowing Claw to flip your stance, and then give them a boot to the gut. Now let's get into the real meat and potatoes of Sifu's combat, animation cancelling. You can pretty much cancel any attack into a block. It may not look like it, but even though your character is still in the attack animation, if you're holding block and someone hits you, a block animation will automatically come out. Your attack animation is cancelled by the block animation as the enemy makes contact. This shows the presence of animation cancelling in this game. But you can actually cancel the attack animation yourself by ducking or hopping using the avoid mechanic. Hold block and tap down. Watch me start the animation of snap kick and instantly cancel it by ducking. Why is this important? It's not just for defense, it's for offense. Say you do two heavy attacks, and now you want to do those same two attacks again. Normally you would have to wait a long time, or else you'd finish the four hit combo string. With animation cancelling, you can loop your hits over and over. Let's go back and talk about the stun system again. Remember that if you avoid an attack and whiff punish, the enemy enters a long stun state. Can you take advantage of it in a way that does more damage than a standard combo? If we take an attack like Raining Strikes, it's something that has a lot of finality to it. You hit heavy and then Raining Strikes and then it's over. But if an enemy is in stun and you hit two heavy attacks and then animation cancel, you have enough time to hit heavy again and go into Raining Strikes. And we've done a lot of damage. On a boss like Sean, who has a short stun window, instead of punishing with heavy into Raining Strikes, I'll do a single heavy, cancel it, and then do heavy into Raining Strikes. In these intense boss fights, maximizing damage can be the difference between living or dying. But is that really it? Just a little more damage in a small combo? No, not at all. There are actually two stun states in Sifu. Stun happens when you whiff punish someone. But if you've been doing constant damage to someone, you can trigger a state called Super Dizzy that lasts a long time. Definitely longer than a standard combo. You'll notice a more dramatic visual and audio effect when Super Dizzy happens. And then you'll know that it's your time to wail on the opponents. How do you take advantage of this opportunity? Animation cancelling. This opportunity happens a lot against bosses. If you're consistently avoiding attacks and punishing, eventually you'll trigger Super Dizzy and you'll be able to feel it. There's a strong slowdown effect that you can learn to recognize and react to, and the boss will just stand there, letting you beat on him for an extended period. Cancel after every few hits and watch that health bar disappear. These animation cancel combos go wonderfully with my favorite focus attack, Vertical Strikes. It costs two bars and puts any enemy into an absurdly long stun state, even longer than Super Dizzy. I'll use this to eliminate a bodyguard or a fat guy that's pissing me off. This can be combined with Super Dizzy states to create hilariously long combo loops on bosses. And now that we're on the subject of bosses, let's talk bosses. If you want to go into each fight fresh, skip this part of the video, but it would be the end of the video, so goodbye. This part is just for people who are struggling. Here's some tips for each boss. With every boss fight, my suggestion is to focus on just two, maybe three of their attacks to learn and punish. The first boss, Fahar, if you stay far from him, he'll do a leaping attack that you can avoid and punish with a full heavy combo. And his other main attack is a double kick into a third kick. This attack is a 50-50, meaning it's a guess as to what the follow-up is. He could do a fast third kick, or it could be a delayed structure break kick. You can avoid either of them and full heavy punish. And his other main attack to look out for is his blade attack string, which again is a 50-50 between a fast kick or a delayed structure break kick at the end. He tends to do this attack a lot, and you can identify it by the long windup at the start. Avoid and punish. The second boss, Sean, will destroy you if you haven't learned how to avoid and punish. He's a big skill check, but at this point, you're ready. 
Watch for his triple swipe attack, avoid the last attack, and punish with two heavies into sweep, and ground hit. Why that combo? Because Sean's stun window is short. The other main string to look for is his 4-hit string, which has more delays in it. The last hit is really delayed. Avoid and punish. Sean's second phase is essentially the same as the first phase, but he'll start to incorporate a sweep and an overhead attack. The sweep will take some time to get used to, so I'd say don't even worry about it. Sweeps are not true low attacks in this game, so you can stand block them and they won't hit you. But if you do hop a sweep, you can punish with heavy heavy into sweep. Watch for the overhead, avoid, and punish. Save your focus bar for his final phase when he goes into hyper mode. Kuroki is one of the toughest bosses in the game to learn how to fight against, and that's why her level gives you a direct shortcut to her from the beginning, to practice. Here's my advice for Kuroki, stay at mid-range. She has so many different attacks that are triggered by different ranges. Stay at mid-range and she will only ever do two attacks, a slow 4-hit string or a fast 5-hit string with a delay at the end. The slow string has a long wind-up to it, you can hop it or you may be safe due to your range. This string goes low, high, low, high. You want to avoid all attacks possible, not just the final hit, because her blades do block damage. Punish with heavy, heavy into sweep. Take Kuroki into practice mode if you absolutely need to, and just try to trigger this string and punish. The second string, the fast one, starts with a quick high attack, which I usually just stand block to eat the damage, and then two quick low attacks, followed by a high and then a delayed low. Learn that pattern. High, low, low, high, low. Punish with heavy, heavy into sweep. Watch for that super dizzy state and take advantage of it. Her second phase seems like it may be even harder because of how fast she is, but it's actually much easier to deal with. When she's far away, duck the knives. When she starts dashing, wait for the flash, duck and punish with heavy, heavy sweep. Her five hit close attack string is the trickiest to deal with. She runs in to hit you and there's a fairly large gap between the hits. Avoid as many hits as you can, but definitely try to avoid the final hit. Do not try to punish. She'll back away after the string finishes and do a charging structure break kick. This is the attack that you avoid and punish. Jin Feng is probably the most awkward fight to learn because of her distance play. Her main attack string is 3 hits, with the last one being a structure breaking sweep. The further away you are, the slower the attacks, so your ducks and hops need to be adjusted accordingly. It can be very tricky to punish her, so I'd recommend staying at mid-range, hopping the sweep, and then punishing with a snap kick into sweep, or a running sliding kick. It's a small punish, I know, but she's a low HP boss. If you can avoid her attacks while standing closer to her, you'll be able to get bigger punishes. Yang, the final boss, much like Kuroki, is very intimidating. It feels like he just does whatever he wants. Well, just like Kuroki, he's easy to manipulate based on range. Stay at mid-range and he'll only do certain attacks, which you can practice avoiding and punishing. At this range, Yang loves to come in with a kick and then he'll do one of two things. He'll dash to the side and do a single punch, which you can avoid and punish. Or he won't dash and he'll do three punches followed by two structure break elbows, avoid and punish. Stay at mid-range and you won't have to deal with much else. If you see Yang go to the center and taunt you, you can use your own taunt by pressing right on the directional pad. It'll make him start coming for you again. This taunt button can be used in normal combat to increase your point multiplier, and while it does have a long animation that leaves you vulnerable, it can be animation cancelled with a duck. If Yang dashes back into long range, be ready for a running sweep. Hop and punish. Yang Phase 2 is a bit of a different story. Like in the first phase, you want to keep him at mid-range. He'll do that kick he always does, but this time he'll do two additional strikes, the last of which should be avoided, which will cause him to dash backwards into a charge move. Don't let it scare you, when he flies at you he'll do three punches, avoid all three, and punish. But after that starting kick, he might do a different three attack string, with the last two attacks being structure break elbows that should be avoided and punished. Just with this, Yang Phase 2 becomes pretty manageable, though it'll take you some time to get used to it. Don't attack him, just wait and punish. As for his crazy sweep patterns, he's programmed to sweep after he whiffs two attacks, so don't go trying to avoid everything he does, because you'll be triggering him to sweep like crazy. Just learn those mid-range attack patterns, avoid the hits at the end, and punish. He'll go down eventually. 
And that concludes my beginner's guide to Sifu. I hope it's been helpful. More helpful than the game is at communicating pretty much anything to the player, which is my main criticism of it. Thanks for watching and have fun.